This time, zombies invade Nebraska. It's Hornady's pandemic in the heartland. Plus, the first successful firearm from Smith & Wesson, the Model 1. And the Les Bear Ladies Pistol Team celebrates 20 years at Camp Perry. This is Shooting USA, reporting the stories of America's shooting sports. They stalk us in the movies, haunt us on TV. From comic books to video games, zombies have become part of America's pop culture, even in the shooting sports. It has now become something of a tradition with several hundred shooters heading to the plains of Nebraska armed with their modern sporting rifles, shotguns, and semi-autos to help rid mid-America of the scourge of the zombies. It's a three-gun competition like no other, Hornady's Pandemic in the Heartland. Welcome to America's wide open spaces and the Heartland Public Shooting Park, where there's more than enough room for shooting clays, 4-H archery championships, and three-gun competition, all in a single weekend. But it's not just any three-gun match. This one is hosted by Hornady, and competitors have come with a single purpose, to shoot the undead. Well, I mean, the zombies won't shoot themselves, so you gotta go ahead and take care of that. Welcome to Pandemic 2016, Zombies in the Heartland. This is the fifth time for the Pandemic in the Heartland, the Hornady-sponsored match where you're defending against zombies. Well, in that period of time, the zombie craze has largely died down in the shooting industry. Yes, Hornady will still sell you Zombie Max, perfect for defending your household. But what's really important about this match is how welcoming it is. With 500 shooters getting involved, many of them first-timers, never having shot a three-gun match before. That's the kind of welcome you get in Grand Island, Nebraska. And it is a terrific match because it's designed around fun. There's no special score that's going to be kept that's going to give you national ranking or anything like that. It is just come out here and have a good time. And, and the line that we use is run with what you brought. You don't have a gamer's handgun and a special rifle and a hot shot shotgun. You just got the stuff you've got at home and you come out and shoot that and you'll have fun. Run with what you brought or not. There are a few rules to this sport, and the name of the game is the first. Shooters compete with three different guns. Modern sporting rifles, semi-auto pistols, and shotguns, pump or auto-loading. You shoot one, two, or all three firearms, depending on the stage. Stage four is a two-gun stage, utilizing shotgun and pistol. Stage layout is nothing if not creative a function of the designer's imagination. Zombies are hiding everywhere, from warehouses to cornfields and behind every haystack. The large zombie head at the front of the range must be engaged to activate the swinging target, which will expose additional paper targets. Competitors shoot from a teetering boat, a porch swing, and even a swinging bridge with lots of movers and spinning targets to multiply the challenges. This stage was a lot of fun, actually. Anytime you have something like a spinner that uh, you know separates the men's from the boys a little bit, that helps a lot. Oh, I love this stage. I haven't been shooting well the entire match, but the stage was fantastic. Um, I like the spinner targets, I like the moving targets, but you know the solid clays just tend to get me. Divisions give each shooter a fighting chance, from newcomer to world class. The amateur division is for three-gun beginners and weekend zombie shooters. Uh, there's nothing better than to know you're saving the world from the undead. Firearms are off the shelf. Tactical is the most popular class with competitors like John Scoutman. Same basic stock guns on the firing line. Magnifying optics, though, are allowed. After several dumpster fire stages, that's the one that makes me want to come back. It's like that golf stroke that makes you want to keep playing golf. And, uh, so I'm happy about it. 
The open division, on the other hand, is almost anything goes, with tricked out race guns and speed loaders allowed. Scoring is a little tricky. The fastest shooter on every stage, including a five second penalty for each missed target, gets a score of 100 points. Everyone else scores a percentage of that based on his or her time compared to the winner. So another fast shooter might score 99, while a slow one might get 50. But the score isn't really the point. Oh, they're fun. It's, you know, it's a fun, uh, different kind of match. The zombie stuff's super popular, the movies, the TV shows and everything. And I like it. We've all watched The Walking Dead. You know, I'm a fan of the show too, so it's kind of fun getting out there with the whole genre of uh, shooting zombies as opposed to just an anonymous paper target. Even the range officers get in the act. But take note, this zombie is not a target. You come for this fun shoot. Everybody else is up dressing up, having fun. Why not me? I think there's very few safe zombies in Hall County, Nebraska this weekend. First responders to the zombie apocalypse. Well, that's a fun way to spend a summer weekend. And what better place than Hornady's pandemic in the heartland? Man, it's rocking and rolling. So beautiful day out here in Nebraska, just having a great time chasing zombies. A great day for chasing zombies. Now that is really getting into the spirit of this match. But let's not forget the spirit of competition. Coming up next, America's top three gun competitors take on the undead and some very challenging stages of fire. Introducing the M&P M2.0 by Smith & Wesson, enhanced for complete shootability. Featuring a new aggressive grip texture, the famous M&P Optimal Grip Angle, four interchangeable palm swell grips for nearly any hand size, a light, crisp trigger with a clear tactile reset. Everything you love about the M&P pistol made even better. The new M&P M2.0, advanced by design. Shooting USA is brought to you by the M&P by Smith & Wesson, advanced by design. As in most shooting sports, 3-Gun has levels of competition for shooters of every skill level. So even if you're a beginner, you'll definitely be welcomed into Hornady's Heartland match. But the top competitors in 3-Gun are also in Nebraska for a weekend of killing zombies and the bragging rights of finishing first in their divisions. The wind is doing what the wind always does on the plains of Nebraska. And that just adds to the degree of difficulty at Hornady's zombie match. Woo! A little windy, a little windy. But wind or no wind, the undead must be neutralized. And one woman who is up to the task is competitor Diana Mueller. She shoots from a rowboat on the stage called Rough Seas and sets a fast time of 33 seconds. Well, it was fun. Um, the wind was definitely a factor, so I'm not gonna lie. Um, it was pushing me around a little bit, but yeah, fun overall. Another top competitor, Lena Miklik, is challenging for first among the women. She mows down the rifle targets on rough seas and makes a fast on her feet transition to pistol. But she has a reload and a total time that is two ticks slower than Diana's. But Lena makes up for it on her final stage with a dominating three gun performance. Um, it was really solid. I've been really happy actually with my shooting. So we'll just see. Got a girl. All done. Lena is ladies champion. The tactical division is super competitive and the largest group of three gunners at this match. Lance Dingler is a favorite and it's clear to see why as he runs the stage called Going Postal. Lance is fast on his rifle targets, 
but adds a little time with some pickups. He makes up for it with his shotgun, though, mowing the undead down. Uh, the rifle is really tough. Yeah. You got a little of balance and moving around, you gotta sway and call your sights. Karen Butler is in a tight race with Lance for top honors in tactical, and he does himself no harm on the stage called Rough Sea. He blazes through his pistol targets, posting a time of just 30 seconds, putting Terran near the top in tactical. Jacob Betsworth is fighting for first with both rivals, Terran and Lance. But he finds smooth sailing on rough seas, nearly one for one shooting with both rifle and pistol. Jacob's best on the stage time of 26 seconds puts a spring in his step. I had a couple makeup shots. Uh, I made up a shot on a clay, and after, as I was pulling the trigger, I saw the hole in the middle of it. So if you shoot him in the middle, sometimes the, the center knocks out and doesn't bust it up. But Karen is not to be denied on this day. His performance on the final stage gives him the tactical division win and puts him in a mood to double tap zombies. And I like it. I wish it was a way to incorporate double tapping somehow. But you know, the most zombie movies don't have that. But maybe three to the body to make it one headshot. It's still a little faster, fun action. But other than that, I love it. It's super fun. Now, the no-holds-barred division, the open shooters with tricked-out guns. Ryan Muller is one of the top competitors in open class, and he shows why he's one of the favorites to win it all. Ryan has one bobble while loading his shotgun, but otherwise delivers a solid performance on stage seven, going postal. Stand by. Ryan's top competition for the Open title is Jerry Mitchleck, who's running stage after stage, both fast and clean. Jerry is consistently among the quickest three gunners competing in the Hornady match. Rough Seas is one example, not so rough for Jerry. How'd the boat affect you at all? I didn't it feel all. it. That's, ba that's like back home, right? That's, that's like what I used to do, home. man. It's me right here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> In the end, Jerry runs away with the match, sealing the deal with his rifle. His aim while shooting from a swing is nothing less than amazing. Even leaving one undead target standing, Jerry sets the fast time on the stage and captures the open title. It was all right, I got uh, these targets. They, they don't all fall the same. So I looked back, I thought it was a little head that was down, but it was a big head that was up. So inconsistency on my part, so get what you get. And what Jerry gets with that final stage score is winning the Open Division title. Taryn Butler took first place in the Tactical Division, and Lena McClick placed at the top of the list for the ladies in the match. Congratulations to all the champions who defeated the zombies. But it's not just the champs who compete. Coming next, meet the newcomers who think three gun is a whole lot of fun. Tradition meets innovation. Ready for any competitive arena. The new Colt Competition Pistol, featuring dual spring recoil system. Novak's new adjustable rear sight and fiber optic front sight. Competition ergonomics. National match barrel in 9mm and 45. Innovation at a competitive price. American made and only available at Colt stocking dealers. Colt, built one at a time, proven every round. Shooting USA is brought to you by Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, and by Bushnell Performance Optics. Multi-gun competition has its roots in practical shooting as an extension of combat pistol shooting by adding in rifle and shotgun as well. Like all practical shooting, it's scored on the combination of speed and accuracy but you don't have to be fast or experienced to come and shoot. Anyone who likes shooting and a competitive challenge is more than welcome at Hornady's Zombie Match.
Another day in America's heartland, and the undead are under all-out attack. But one competitor is hanging back, nervously watching the action. You know, it's it's one of those things where you, you just it doesn't need you good to get nervous about it. So, but you got I mean, there is some to it. I mean, something I've never done. Are you ready? Not really, but let's go. <laughs> something Tony has never done. Yes, this is the first match he's ever shot, and his very first stage in any shooting sport. And when his introduction to firearms competition is over, it's easy to see how much he enjoys it. Tony says his first match won't be his last. He has a three-gun goal. Just to be better, you know, and get, just enjoy it. I mean, it's, it's something different. It's different than standing in the shooting bay and just putting holes in paper, you know? So it's great. Great and great fun. And that's what this match is really about. Hornady's weekend of busting zombies aims to give new competitive shooters a fun place to learn their sport. You see the enjoyment and the enthusiasm and you see them getting hooked and going over there to the vendor tent and buying new gear and talking to the pros about what they need. When you see them get hooked, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. And speaking of hooked, I'm gonna rock this. I'm gonna try and rock this. We'll see actually how well it works, but I'm, I'm really excited. Nervous, nervous, but excited. Here's a new competitor with no shortage of confidence. Teresa grew up in a military family, but didn't really shoot until she met her boyfriend, an avid three gunner who always competes in the Hornady match. So this year I said, well, I wanna go. And he said, well, are you gonna shoot? And I was like, well, hell yeah, I'm gonna shoot. Is there like even a question in that? And while this may be Teresa's first competition, she's already become an ambassador, encouraging other women to come out to the range. I just feel like there's a lot of women who, or young girls, because um, I'm in my early 20s, that don't know that you can get out and do this. Guns are the great equalizer, right? So it doesn't take a superior amount of strength or a superior amount of speed. If you have patience, concentration, and a level hand, and you practice that, you can really get good at this sport. And here's another new competitor who's come to this match with an experienced hand. Tucker Stutzman is here with his dad, Jim, who's teaching his son the ways of three gun. If you come over here, you can get that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Tucker has been shooting with his dad for years, just not in competition. And on this stage, on this day, the score sheet tells the tale. Tucker has beaten his dad. Yeah, pretty bad. I guess I'm better than him. My raw time barely beat his for all time. And overall it was good, it was good. You beat me. But Jim knows a day at the range with his son is a day that he wins too. Makes dad proud to be able to see him, uh, you know, being successful, being safe, being responsible. Uh, interacting with other adults, you know, it's, it's a great way to raise kids and a great place to do it. And a great place to come with your buddies, even if they bust your chops. You owe me like 60 rounds. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta load them yourself, eh? Reed Andres is here from Colorado, shooting his first match ever. He says he got tired of his friends, Brent and Justin, having all the fun. This is fun. You hear them, they, they come down here and come back and tell me about all the fun times and fun stories and how the competition's good. It's a great shoot, so I wanted to be a part of it. And for Reed's friends, it just makes perfect sense to grow the sport they enjoy. It's one of the best shooting sports out there. We really enjoy it, so we've been trying to introduce more and more new people to it and starting to grow it around where we come from as well. So any new shooter we can get along, we bring them. That's a rush. So, looks like Brent and Justin have hooked another new three-gun enthusiast, expanding the sport. And if you're thinking the Hornady match looks like your kind of fun as well, we've got info at ShootingUSA.com to help you get signed up for next year. And still ahead today, the Les Spare Ladies Pistol Team celebrates two decades of competition at Camp Perry. But coming first, 
the first successful pistol from Horace Smith and Daniel Wesson. Out of all you'll spend on shooting this year, this is the most important, a membership in the NRA. Join at ShootingUSA.com and I'll pay $10 for you. It's that important. The Serpa Level 2 Tactical Holster by Blackhawk. Honor as a way of life. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Bear Customs 1911s, hand fitted to perfection because you'll accept no less. No company is better known for quality wheel guns than Smith & Wesson, and they should be. They've been building revolvers for 160 years. And all along, they've preferred numbers to describe those revolvers. The first 357 Magnum, the Model 27, and the 44 Magnum, the Model 29. The revolver's success began in 1857 with the first revolver, logically named the Model 1. That's now one of history's guns. It's a very small firearm that played a very big role in history. A seven-shot, single-action, rim-fire revolver that changed American firearms forever in 1857. Smith & Wesson's Model 1. The Smith & Wesson Number 1 is one of the most important firearms in American and possibly world history. I mean, this was the gun that uh, put Smith & Wesson on the map made them a viable proposition. But once they uh, took advantage of Roland White's patent of the board through cylinder and produced this little 22 short revolver, uh, the company really took off. Roland White's patented board through cylinder chambers a self-contained metallic cartridge. This innovation sets the number one apart from other American arms of the day. No more loose powder and ball. Smith & Wesson licensed White's invention for $500 plus 25 cents per gun, and it was a huge success. It really, really caught the public's fancy. They couldn't sell enough of them. They had to improve their factory. They had to churn these things out as fast as they could. It was a, a real great, great seller. In fact, in 25 years of production, Smith & Wesson built a quarter of a million Model 1 revolvers. A marvel of simple operation. They call the Smith & Wesson number one a tip-up. You know, for a very good reason. To load it, you push this little lever, it releases the barrel, the barrel tips up. You remove the cylinder and load seven rounds, very simply. You know, put the cylinder back in the revolver, close it, and all you have to do is cock it, and she's ready to go. And after firing seven rounds, ejecting the empties is easy. Smith & Wesson thought of everything. You got a little built-in ejector there. You just take and hook out the cases. A firearm that was clearly ahead of its time at the end of the 1850s. There were three basic issues. This particular one's a, a second issue, probably made sometime in the uh, 1860s. In good shape, this was a typical one. You know, it's a brass frame, silver plated, uh, blued barrel, rosewood grips, in very, very good shape, and uh, still shoots well. The number one also featured a spur trigger, common in the day. All in all, a favorite self-defense piece for ladies and gents alike. Easy to handle, easy to cock, it's very concealable, and uh, you know, ladies like them. Guys, gentlemen like them, they can stick them in their trouser pockets and you'd never even know you had a revolver there. It's uh, really, a, really a handy little piece. The popularity of the number one didn't end with the man on the street. Smith & Wesson realized huge sales to soldiers just four years after introducing its little backup gun. Of course, it had the, the advantage, it came out right before the Civil War. So lots of um, 
Civil War soldiers were buying the things to stick in the trouser pockets and take with them. And Smith, realizing they had a good thing going, came out with a larger version of it during the war, the, the number two in 32 rimfire. Same basic design as the Model 1, but a more powerful cartridge than the original 22. The 22 short, you know, it does hold the distinction of being uh, the longest continuously produced cartridge in American history. It came out in the late 1850s and they're, they're still making the darn thing. Powerful, no, and especially in its black powder form, but by the same token, this particular revolver carried seven of these things. Not much power, but a revolution in revolver design as the first of the self-contained cartridge designs that would be the future. And this one is still a shooter 160 years later. Actually, it's not a bad group. That's uh, surprising because I was aiming here and it looks like I, I got, him in the, got him in the nose and, and in the, uh, the right eye. That would not be pleasant, even with a 22 short. Great little pistol. Hard to imagine a self-defense handgun chambered in 22 short, but Smith & Wesson sold more than a quarter million Model 1s. It was a revelation in its time. Those that survive are highly collectible today. Well, coming next, 600 shooters take to the firing lines at the World Series of the Shooting Sports at Camp Perry. This is custom gun making, hand fitting, slide to frame, hand cutting the magwell, blending the surfaces of the slide, the frame, and the beaver tail. At every step, a Les Bear Custom 1911 is hand fitted to tolerances no CNC machine can match for match grade accuracy. And a Les Bear Custom 1911 is priced at one third of what you'd pay any other gun maker. See all the 1911s and rifles at lesbear.com. Shooting USA is brought to you by Blackhawk Honor as a way of life and by the M&P by Smith & Wesson, advanced by design. In 1903, Congress passed legislation to establish the National Matches, competition that would improve the nation's marksmanship. The tradition continues with hundreds of civilians, law enforcement officers, and military teams making the trip to Ohio to the shores of Lake Erie, where Camp Perry has played host to the national matches for 110 years. There are few places in the world where you can feel the history. Camp Perry is one of those places, both on and off the range. That history dates back more than a century Men and women on the firing line shooting service pistols and rifles, all competing for prestigious titles. To this day, it's no different. Well, the National Matches has been here since uh, 1907, and uh, it's, a, uh, it's a wonderful experience. It's the, uh, the World Series of the Shooting Sports. The heritage here is huge. It's, it's palpable. Uh, there are people that have been shooting out here for 50 years, others that are shooting here for the first time, so it's a wonderful blend of, of uh, championship shooters and amateurs and everything in between. One of those seasoned shooters is Rob Latham, who has dozens of USPSA and IPSC titles under his belt, but he's not a champion here. For Rob, it's more about the experience than the competition. For shooters that have never been here, it's like a pilgrimage. And to come to, to Camp Perry for either the pistol or the rifle national championships is like no other shooting event. If, you're not, if you haven't done it, you've got to try it. And today, nearly 600 competitors are trying the national pistol championships, thanks to the civilian marksmanship program. Only service pistols are used here, the M9 Beretta in 9mm, or the 1911 government model in 45 ACP. Competitors shoot offhand, strong hand only. No optics here either, just iron sights. The goal is to punch the bullseye, better yet, punch the X-ring, the tiebreaker, at 50 yards. And at 25 yards, timed for rapid fire. All of that requires concentration. As long as you can just block everything out, any 
any other things that are going on, the wind and brass from your neighbor hitting you on your chest or your ear, then you just focus on what's happening, the sights and the trigger, then the results will be there. Beyond the history, Camp Perry is known for its ever-changing winds. So the challenge is there, but if overcome, there's also reward. Kathy Chatterton knows that very well. She's been shooting her Les Bear Custom for 20 years, and it still runs and wins as Les built it. When I first got this gun, it really wasn't allowed. Modifications weren't allowed. So these days they are, but it's really not necessary for me to have to modify this gun. It's perfect the way it is. But Kathy did modify her medal from the President's Pistol Match into a necklace. Since 1967, that match has been one of the CMP's premier national trophy events. Champions' names are engraved on the elaborate trophy, and the top shooter even receives a note from the White House, well, depending on who's in it. The winner um, sometimes will get a letter from the President of the United States that congratulating them that they won. and. Uh, it hasn't happened the past couple years, but we're hoping to get that going again. Well, maybe next year. But for now, shooters at Camp Perry are vying for their spot in history on any one of the 24 national trophies. These are the most sought after with historic busts and bronzes awarded to winning individuals in each category, like the General Custer Trophy and the Gold Cup, awarded to the top military or police pistol team. Um, if you look back at old historic pictures, you'll see competitors with those same trophies back in the early 1900s. And it, it's pretty impressive that those trophies are still around and still being awarded. All trophies waiting for the next engraved plaque of Camp Perry's new champions. Of course, the trophies are permanent. The winners don't take them home, but have their name added to the history each trophy represents. Well, up next, meet the pistol teams competing in the national matches, including one that's celebrating a milestone. Day after day, it's there. It's ready for when you need it the most. The Rapid Safe combines fast, touch free ease of use with safety and security. The Rapid Safe from Hornady. Shooting USA is brought to you by STI and the continuing evolution of the 1911, and by Comtac Everyday Carry Holsters. The National Trophy matches have been around for as long as Camp Perry has hosted the national matches. And one pistol match in particular is a team event with four members shooting for total target score. And there's great tradition to be represented by each of those teams on the line. Three, two, one. 0-7-30 and the cannon's roar indicates the national matches have commenced. Shooters line up side by side, civilian teams representing their home ranges, and military teams serving all branches of the armed forces. Well, it's it's a definite honor. You know, I've been doing it for quite a long time, and um, you know, every day we put this uniform on, and uh, you know, we. We try to be ambassadors to the sport. We try to help as many people as we can. And then when we get done competing, we uh, go back to Fort Benning, and then we assist the soldiers with, uh, with uh, everything from our master marksmanship trainer course to uh, qualifications, and try to pass on what we learned here at the national matches back to the soldiers. Sergeant First Class Adam Sokolowski is the Army Marksmanship Unit's team coach. Today, he's tasked with keeping the boys in gold focused. Because it's a team match and the pressure's on, sometimes the most basic of things uh, seems to elude us. There's so many targets and they all look the same. So first thing is is that uh, reconfirming that they, they know what target number they're on. Because uh, it's real easy to crossfire. This national trophy team match requires a four-man team. Or in one case, a four-woman team. 
The Less Fair Custom Pistol Team, comprised of Kathy Chatterton, Kimberly Hobart Fleming, and Kim Radford. Uh, Kathy, Kimberly, and I have been shooting together for 20 years. In 1996, Kathy organized the squad. I suggested to Les that he would have better visibility if he sponsored an all-woman team, since there were, at the time, very few female shooters at all, not to mention there was no all-female team at all. Through the years, the Les Bear ladies acquired several national records. Now, they're vying for another, with a new recruit. All teams must have a new shooter to compete. So the ladies picked up Ohio State senior Elizabeth Burling, who was just two years old when the Les Bear Custom Team was formed. She's doing wonderful. Um, she's a great asset to the team. She has a positive experience. Her skills are improving all the time with each match. Each team fires 160 shots, 40 shots each for 1,600 total possible points. First, slow fire. Shooters aim at an eight and a half inch bullseye 50 yards out, 10 rounds in 10 minutes. And that's not a problem with less 1911. My gun is a 1911 um, model Les Bear, accurized to two inches at 50 yards. Um, it's the original gun that we were uh, issued 20 years ago whenever we started. He builds an excellent firearm. It's high quality. He takes a lot of pride in his work. Uh, it shows. In this case, it shows on the target. Next, the teams move up to the 25-yard line, and the bullseye shrinks to five and a half inches. Still, 10 points plus a tie-breaking X for center hits nine points for the nine ring, and so on. These final two relays consist of 10 shots each under tight time limits. And in rapid fire, steel frame 1911s are manageable even for the ladies. In shooting match ammo and these great Les Bear guns, uh, we don't really have a lot of recoil to deal with. It's easy for women to handle these guns. The Les Bear ladies post lots of solid hits, but in the end, the points are not enough for another title. Even so, winning is not the Les Bear ladies' primary mission. For the last 20 years and going forward, they're out to show the world women can not only compete, but shoot head to head with men. We just want women to know, and girls, young ladies, that they can come out here and shoot, and they come out and compete, and you don't. It's not a man's sport, it's uh, for everybody. You know, we've got to grow the sport. We want to see it continue for a long time. I'm planning on being here for another 30 years. After 20 years, they're still leading the way for women in the pistol sports. And congratulations are due for the team from the Army Marksmanship Unit, shooting to first place in this year's match. Well, up next, Colt brings back the Delta Elite and the 10 millimeter. Introducing the M&P M2.0 by Smith & Wesson, enhanced for complete shootability. Featuring a new aggressive grip texture, the famous M&P optimal grip angle, four interchangeable palm swell grips for nearly any hand size, a light crisp trigger with a clear tactile reset. Everything you love about the M&P pistol made even better. The new M&P M2.0. Advanced by design. Shooting USA is brought to you by Colt. Built one at a time, proven every round. Here's news from Colt. The Delta Elite is back in production after disappearing from the market for over 20 years. The Delta Elite is chambered in 10 millimeter and was originally one of the responses to the infamous FBI shootout in 1986 in Miami, when the mostly 9 millimeter guns the agents had proved ineffective in stopping two bank robbers. Two agents died before the robbers were finally put down, but the call went out for more stopping power. The first choice was the 10 millimeter Norma cartridge that could generate twice the energy of the 9 millimeter. 
Both Smith & Wesson and Colt introduced pistols for the 10. For Colt, it was the Delta Elite in 1987. Although the public likely first noticed when Sonny Crockett gunned up with the Bren 10 in the first episodes of Miami Vice. Even then, they likely didn't know the Bren was chambered in 10 millimeter as they watched Sonny put down our friend and gun coach, Jim Zubiena, in his final appearance as the bad guy in Miami Vice. Today, 10 millimeter is available and from Hornady in critical duty. With a hard lead core, it's formidable power and penetration for law enforcement. In other loads, it's power for handgun hunting pigs or bear defense in the wild near magnum power in an auto loader. And it helps that the Delta Elite reissue is an all steel full size 1911 that weighs in at two and a quarter pounds in stainless. And John has found that helps in controlling recoil with the near magnum power of the 10 millimeter. Well, I've got a confession to make. Today's the first time I've ever shot a 10 millimeter and there was a lot of buildup to what I could expect in the form of felt recoil. Well, thanks to this full-size government model, it's pretty manageable. Big power from the 10 that has fans across the country who now have a reissued choice with the Delta Elite that's improved over the original with Novak sights now standard. Colt suggests a retail of just under $1,100 if you want to carry or shoot 10 millimeter. Now, to finish the cartridge story, by 1990, Smith and Winchester combined to create the 40 Smith & Wesson that generates close to the same energy as the 10, but in a shorter case that could fit in guns designed first for nine millimeter. And the 40 has largely taken over for law enforcement and personal protection. But if you want 10, the Delta Elite is back. Well, up next, pump or semi-auto? We're talking shotgun home defense with Blackhawk Pro Shooter, Todd Jerry. Out of all you'll spend on shooting this year, this is the most important, a membership in the NRA. Join at shootingusa.com and I'll pay $10 for you. It's that important. On March 29th, 1911, the armed forces adopted a pistol that would change the world. For decades to come, men and women relied on the most trusted pistol in history as they fought the toughest battles to protect our freedom. Today, we celebrate another great victory, introducing the all-new Colt Competition Pistol, designed for heroes, created for champions. We didn't just make history, we're still making it. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Bear Customs 1911s, hand-fitted to perfection because you'll accept no less. The Shotgun, one of the more formidable home defense choices available. The sound of chambering a pump gun alone may be enough to stop an intruder. But there's more than that to shotgun tactics, and that's why we have Blackhawk Pro Shooter Todd Jarrett with us with his tips on positions, and control of the defensive shotgun. Hey, it's Todd Jarrett. Today's pro tip is home defense shotguns and all the accessories, positioning, different styles of shotguns, but most important, what ammunition can do for you for a home defense situation. The most distinct shotgun on the planet, the 870, Let's get started. Let's talk back to techniques now in order to shoot a shotgun properly. Maintaining a good control in the pocket of your shoulder, allowing yourself to be able to look down the sights properly with a proper sight picture. What we want to do is actually have a nice firm grip, but being pushing forward on a pump action gun to be able to control the gun and recoil, but also help maintain a good cycle rate on it as we're shooting that. So the next thing we want to do is Make sure that I want to have my upper body over top of my arches of my feet in order to be able to control recoil 
as the gun fires and it gives me great follow throughs what it does. The Gen 3 stocks from, um, from Blackhawk, 80% reduction in recoil, pretty amazing. Let's look at all these techniques right now and live fire. Okay, we've been talking about manually operated shotguns. Let's talk about semi-autos, which you may have at home. There are inertia-driven guns and there are gas-operated shotguns. They're slightly different than a pump gun. So what I want to do is I'll maintain a good, solid pushback into the pocket to be able to control my recoil of the gun. But this time, instead of pushing forward, I'm going to be actually pulling back with my semi-auto shotgun to be able to maintain good pickup of the next round because if you don't have good control of it, you will short stroke that. So let's take a look at this with live fire. Working on mechanics or your shotgun can be very important. I tell you what, let's take a look at exactly what ammunition does for a home defense situation. Well, we're at 25 feet away here, and I shot an ounce and a half load of bird shot. And in this target right here, we shot a slug at 1,400 feet per second, which was a one ounce load. That slug right there can travel through multiple walls, where a bird shot can actually reduce the amount of damage traveling through walls or doors out there. Well, I can tell you there are all different types of ammunition on the market out there today. Low recoil, very high velocity ammunition out there. You got to pick the one that you want. It works for you for a home defense situation. Well, I hope you learned something. Hey, let's go have a little fun here and shoot some plates down. Got it, baby. <laughs> so, pump or semi auto, bird shot or slug, make your choices to be ready. And you can take a closer look at the differences again at our website in the pro tips section. Then practice up a bit at the range and bring your shotgun to Nebraska next year for Hornady's Pandemic in the Heartland for more practice blasting zombies. Find all that at ShootingUSA.com. For all of us, I'm Jim Scout and shoot safely, shoot often, and keep them in the 10 range.